Hey everyone, I'm going to be repairing another Sapphire 9 radio, radio found in old 1970s, late 60s VW automobiles. If you want to see a complete restoration of one, I have a link up here in the top right. We'll take you to a comprehensive restoration. This could be repaired left in the original patina. And this video is not going to really focus on the repair of this unit. I don't think it's going to be very comprehensive repair. Nothing really seems to be binding on this radio. Everything seems to work really good for its age. What I really want to focus on is the fact that I'm going to be installing an auto switching Bluetooth module into this radio. Emphasis on auto switching. I don't want to have anything external outside of this radio. I want everything internal, no switch that switches between Bluetooth and AM. I want it to look just like this with a Bluetooth feature. Now there are Bluetooth solutions that you could purchase if you're willing to go with a switch and not go with an auto switching feature or a multiplexer that you could simply adapt right to the car's voltages that are coming into this radio and that would have been a lot easier but then I would have had to deal with the switching even to find one of these modules that didn't have a multiplexer but showed a, a value of high if there was audio flowing would have been helpful to me. Didn't find that so I'm going to have to go a different route show you what we're going to do. We're going to kick off the Bluetooth portion of this project with a standard ESP32 dev board as well as a PCM5102 DAC. The actual radio install most likely be using a mini ESP32 board. These are not all the parts, just what we're starting off with. And while the radio looks really nice inside, I'm actually very surprised at the condition. I know that I'm going to have to order some parts, especially this capacitor right here. So I'm going to be working both projects in tandem because I don't need the radio to get started on the Bluetooth portion and ESP32. Grounding will be critical. I'll have to replace this lug as well. Taking the circuit board bracket off because I found a potential location for all of my parts that I'm going to be adding. And this space between the circuit board and the rear of the cabinet has potential as long as I don't run into any interference issues or heat issues since the final is right here and use the back of the cabinet as a sink. Here's a second option. It's mechanical here, far away from everything, which can also be a problem, but it's also near the input from the antenna, which could be problematic. Making its way all the way to here is a long way. Either way, I shouldn't digress. This radio needs to be fixed, and I need to talk about how we're going to assemble the ESP32 for our first test. Start off our first scenario with a USB-powered ESP32 and a PCM5102. SCK will go straight to ground. BCK to GPIO 26, DIN to GPIO 22, LCK to GPIO 25, ground will go to ground, and VIN will go to the 3.3 volt connection on the ESP32. The pinouts that I provided are made to work with a library provided by Phil Schatzman, link provided below to get Bluetooth on ESP32 in conjunction with the DAC working. Here's the example library that he provides and here are the pinouts, and I only deviate very slightly from the example to get everything working. Here's the example that he provides, and here's what I got, calling my VW radio project, and just a little bit more output that I provide in a loop to show the audio state and the connection state of the Bluetooth with a five second sleep on the loop. Here we have that library, and here we have the platform io.ini with the live depth, that I'll include that shows you how to add that library and compile it into your program. So we're going to take this program with a debug level of three just to demonstrate some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and we're going to push it right to the ESP32 and we're going to give it a shot see what happens. Kick this off by bumping the device we see it initialized audio state is zero connection state is zero turn Bluetooth on on the phone And we see our VW radio project below. I'll click on it. And we can see that it is connected. And we can see the connection state changed to two. Audio state is still zero. Now if I hit play on a song. We'll see there was a notification from debug that audio started. And on our next poll we see audio state is now two. No output connected. We won't hear anything. But we could see that it is running. Audio state of two playing through Bluetooth VW radio project. So now I'm going to hit the pause button and in just a little bit, 
we will see a notification that audio is stopped. There is a delay, and there it is. And on the next poll, we will see the audio state is now zero. Now I shut off the Bluetooth. And we see a notification has been shut off. Next poll of connection state goes back to zero. Everything's working as intended. Let's try this out in an amplifier now. Connecting a cable between the output of this DAC and my Dynaco ST70 amplifier. We'll power up everything just as before. We found our module, we'll select it. Now that this is selected, being cautious, I'll fire up the amplifier. I'll speed up the warm up process so we don't have to wait here. I dropped the volume to zero just to be safe. All the music in this video is provided royalty free from bensound.com. Fifty percent volume is comfortable in this room on the phone setting. Something to think about when you have two volume controls, one on the phone and one on the radio, when you're using one of those external Bluetooth transceivers on a radio. Move on to the next phase in the project, and that is the regulated power supply. This connects to the car battery, accepting fluctuating DC voltages, pushing out a constant five volts. Ground will go to the chassis ground of the car, the negative terminal. In goes to the switch power positive lead. Ground will also go to the ESP32's ground. And out will go to the 5 volt pin of the ESP32. And I chose this power supply for a couple reasons. One, because it's 2 centimeters by 1 centimeters, very small. And while it does have an adjustable pot on the rear, it also has these bridges that allow for a static output voltage. Got a pack of five of them on Amazon. Over time, that adjustable pot could be a problem with the humidity and the heat in a car, changing the voltage and blowing out all the electronics should the voltage increase dramatically or decrease as best case scenario, causing everything to simply stop working. And it's made in China, so you wanna remove as much possibilities for failure as possible. So using this with a solder bridge, taking that out of the equation is definitely the best way to go. Remove our extra flux with alcohol and the wires are done. Now we'll set up the bridge, the five volt pad. Now the instructions say we're supposed to cut a bridge on the adjuster as indicated in the red circle. I'll be damned if I was able to do it even with a magnifying glass and I gave up. The pot continued to work and ended up just removing the potentiometer from the front of the board. So I've got it hooked up to my DC power supply, the output to my multimeter. I'll fire it up. And we can see we're at 9 volts right now on the input. And on the output, we're looking at 5 volts. We're just going to have a look right quick just to see as I'm set on 50 milliamps full deflection. There's just a negligible nothing amount of current that I'm picking up. So that's not going to be measured right now without a load. And here at 5 volts... I'm going to turn up from 9 volts on the input, drawing up to 11, 12, 13, 14 and a half. And we're still at 5 volts, doing exactly what it does, regulating at 5. I'm going to drop it down, 9, and then boom, down to 4. And we can see at 4, obviously, we can see it breaks up because the voltage is just too low to maintain 5 volts. But as I raise it up, it comes back up to 5 and then stays at 5, coming up now 10 and a half, back up to 14 and a half. So yeah, that works good, except for one problem I'll point out. Since I removed that potentiometer, now I lost it. If you touch it, change the resistance, bumped up to 7 volts, we just broke our board. 7 volts would destroy something that requires 5 volt input. We're going to have to isolate this, as I did, with electrical tape. And now it's safe to touch, and we could work with this with the ESP32. Having made the 5 volt connections to the ESP32, I power everything up. And we see this pulsing 30 to 34 milliamps in the ESP32. There's nothing wrong with this at all. I'm just pointing that out as an observation. Looking at the ESP32, we see that both of the lights are lit. One on the board and one on the DAC. Change the meter deflection over to 150 milliamps to be safe. And as I go through all the motions, we're going to make sure that the current draw stays within budget. We're going to turn on the Bluetooth now this power supply is rated for one and a half amps, but given it's from China, I'm gonna divide by two 
And given that it's in a car, I'm going to divide by two again. Really, I want it under half an amp. So we see our VW radio project and manually connect. And we see that it just jumped up as it connected to 55 milliamps and then dropped back down. Monitor the current as we start sending audio. So we're seeing 55 milliamps and then onward to 60 milliamps. Now we'll hit the pause button. Back down to 55 and then slowly starts creeping its way down. 50, 45, and now it's down by 30 something again. I'll zoom in. Yeah, looking at 28 milliamps, but it's not pulsing. So now I'm going to shut off the Bluetooth. And we can see that after a spike to around 45 milliamps, the current dropped back down again to between 22 and 26, and it's pulsing again. So that pulse is probably a function of Bluetooth. Well under budget. I don't think I have to worry, even with the extra components yet to go in. It was pulsing between 30 and 34 before the Bluetooth connection, and now it's between 22 and 26. Slightly lower. A little odd, but not a problem. Well, that wraps up this episode until more parts arrive so I can continue. So we're going to leave it here. I hope you found this episode enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series come out, the link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?